Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Dishman Carbon Carbogen Ensis Limited Earnings Conference Call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode. And there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand over the conference to Mr. Pascal, CEO of Dishman Carbogen and Sys Limited. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, moderator, and uh, good evening, uh, dear shareholders. Um, happy to be with you today uh, to present our Q2 and uh, half a year uh, results. First of all, I'm absolutely delighted with uh, the outcome of uh, the EDQM audit at uh, Dishman Fight in Basla uh, uh, late September. Uh, the positive outcome uh, are reopening us uh, a lot of opportunities for the future and a uh, lot of uh, potential internal co co collaboration between Cambodian and uh, Dishman Cambodian for the future. So uh, we are absolutely delighted. And I'm sure uh, our CFO, uh, Mr. Ashin Dabal, and uh, our CEO, um, Mr. Paolo Amanino, will, will come back on that super important point for the group. Regarding Cambodian the Q2 uh, member uh, came with a, a little bit of, of uh, uh, lower number than, than expected in terms of, of revenues for, for that particular month, uh, mainly due to the fact that uh, we unfortunately had to postpone the start up of our new facility in France for, for, for a few weeks. Um, as you uh, can imagine, it's a uh, Greenfield, uh, new build uh, facility, and here and there, we discovered a few things that we had to fix uh, uh, before we, we started. Um, so uh, that was the, 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 the reasons why we had, we had to postpone the, 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 the startup for, for a few weeks. Um, the result now is positive, and uh, uh, we are going to make our first uh, customer uh, clinical batch next week, so uh, now in line with, uh, with, uh, with what we wanted to do after this, uh, this, this uh, uh, postpone of, of startup. But the, the outcome of the, of the revenues for the Q2 where we are affected uh, by this uh, by this event. Um, however, if we look at the overall performance of cabbage and over this first uh, two uh, quarters is uh, uh, still positive because we we we, uh, we have uh, revenue that is better than last year, but a bit lower than uh, the the budget we we fixed due to the event I just described. From a, a profitability perspective, uh, this is still a, a challenge, uh, especially in Europe with uh, high inflation uh, rates uh, of salaries and uh, also uh, cost of energy uh, in some countries where we are still having uh, uh, high uh, price for energy costs, especially around, around fuel. Electricity is getting better, but fuel is, is still uh, a, a challenge for us. So uh, uh, we try to cope with, uh, with, uh, with pricing uh, on the outside, but uh, uh, with uh, such high uh, inflation rate, and uh, so it's difficult to, to come to customer every every quarter with a, with a, with a high <coughs> high pricing uh, because the negotiations are more on the, on the, on a yearly basis. So uh, we still have to cope, and we, we are passing on uh, those costs. But inflation is still running, and we, we still have a bit of a lag between our pricing and our, and, and our cost from uh, from uh, from uh, one month to the other. So. Uh, uh, we do our best. Um, we still uh, uh, in, in a positive mindset, but this is challenging for us, uh, obviously. And uh, the, the, the end of the year forecast uh, is also uh, uh, a bit of a challenge due to those uh, those events, especially in the raw material uh, 
perspective where we are here and there we are we are we are struggling, struggling from time to time also from from price increase. Um, what we are covered in MCs, we're working on a new organization which which will enable us to have a, 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 a leaner uh, way of operating in the future. Uh, we try also to implement uh, successfully uh, a number of, of digital tools, among them uh, SAT, which will enable us to have a better control and, and, and better uh, driving of, uh, of carbon analysis uh, for the future. That project is ongoing since now uh, almost a year, and uh, we are uh, quite positive on the outcome of, uh, of these implementations uh, uh, in, the, in the near future. Which will give uh, effects uh, probably uh, around the next year uh, after the, 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 the startup of, of, of ACP uh, during the, uh, the, first, the first part of, uh, of the exercise 24 25. Uh, along the, the good news, uh, you know, we have a, a very close uh, relationship with a Japanese uh, customer who we are coming on, on site a uh, few weeks back, and uh, they, they are extremely happy with, with what, they have, what, they have, what they have seen so far, and uh, we are ready to start the first campaign for those guys uh, in the first quarter of the uh, of, uh, of the calendar year next year, so January 24. This will uh, drive us uh, to uh, uh, a very large uh, part of the revenue uh, from, uh, from that point to uh, uh, 2930 with a, a, a continued forecast of, uh, of high value for, for us. So that's a very good news in this uh, uh, collaboration around this uh, ABC project. Uh, despite of the fact that uh, we delayed the startup of the French facility, we are sitting on a very strong pipeline of, uh, of, of projects that uh, we are stockpiling uh, for the time being. Uh, and we have an extremely positive feedback on, uh, on that new facility. Uh, all customers that are on site uh, coming for visit or audits, they are extremely. Uh, happy with what, what they are uh, seeing, and uh, we are uh, concluding a number of, of, of contracts for the, for the future, uh, European customer, but also uh, US customer for that for that activity, which is a very positive news uh, for, for, for the site. So uh, uh, the startup has been a bit difficult, but we definitely have a very positive uh, view for the, for the next uh, months, next years. And uh, we should cope with, uh, with our business plan for an exit career, which is uh, a very good news. Uh, to conclude, uh, I should say that, uh, and to come back with this uh, positive news uh, at this land side, um, for us it's a big opportunity for uh, a global collaboration internally. Uh, our sales teams are going to work together. To, uh, to, to, to fill the gaps uh, in the future, and uh, we are uh, now uh, looking back at the extremely positive uh, potential collaborations between the, the, the two arms of the groups, uh, making things happen for the future, and, and develop uh, further collaborations with, uh, with uh, some collab <coughs> collaborations with our customer base as well. So uh, uh, that's very positive, and then on this positive word, I'm going to give the, the words to our uh, CFO, Mr. Rashid Alam. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Pascal. Uh, hello, everybody. A very good evening to all of you. Uh, looking at the financial performance for the second quarter of uh, financial year 24, um, it was a softer quarter as compared to the first quarter uh, of the current financial year. As, as we spoke on the last call, the first quarter was um, well, was an exceptional quarter, both in terms of revenues as well as uh, the operational profitability, uh, and uh, because of the higher commercial sales that happened in the fourth quarter, uh, obviously the, the current quarter where we did not have so much of commercial sales on the current side, it looks uh, than Q1 of FY24. Having said that, uh, the first half of the current financial year 
has been a, a good one for us where there is a growth uh, both in terms of the revenue as well as the operational profitability. Talking specifically about the second quarter, the, the revenue from operations stood at about 587 crores as compared to 614 crores of the second quarter of financial year 23. Uh, this translated into an EBITDA of about 63 crores uh, for the second quarter and this is uh, roughly about 10.5% in terms of the, of the data margin. Uh, the employee expenses, uh, if you see, have, I mean, show, uh, show an increase of about 32 crores in the, in the second quarter of this financial year as compared to the previous year. And most of this increase is related to the foreign exchange you know, fluctuation. Uh, largely from the Swiss franc to the INR, which amounted to almost about 30 crores. Uh, the finance cost also shows an increase. This quarter, we, the finance cost was at about 27 crores, 27 and a half crores as compared to 20 crores in the comparable quarter. And this was largely on account of the global increase in the interest rate uh, that we see across the board. Uh, so overall, uh, the quarter was softer, as I mentioned. Uh, if we go by the segment-wise revenue, uh, cargo finances ran. The revenue was kind of flattish as compared to uh, Q2 of financial year 23, uh, and it stood at about 437 crores. Uh, for the first half, uh, however, the revenue increase is by 24.5%. And we are close to 1,000 crores of revenue at, uh, at Carbo Finances Group. The, the, the cholesterol and the vitamin B and a lot of business uh, for the current, uh, as in the Q2 of FY24, uh, showed a growth of about 35% uh, from 64 crores to about 87 crores. But most of this growth was driven by the, the cholesterol business which is a, a lower margin business for us as compared to the analog. For the first half, uh, the vitamin D analogs and cholesterol business um, crossed a growth of about 40% from 128 crores to about 180 crores in, uh, in H1 of FY24. Uh, the India business, both on the grant side as well as uh, the quartz and generic side, showed a deep growth as compared to Q2 of uh, FY23. And this is largely on account of uh, most of the shipments from India expected to go out in the second half of the current year. And uh, we expect to catch up in the, in, in the second half of the year. Um, and obviously the, the successful inspection in September by the EDQM and earlier by the Japanese FDA uh, would also definitely help for the growth of the India business uh, in the remainder half of the year as well as in the next financial year and going forward. So that's a, that's a brief on the on the revenue side. As far as the margins were concerned, um, the Carbon Genesis Group, the margins were at about 12.2% uh, compared to 14.6% in Q2 of FY23. Uh, and as I mentioned, the reason for lower margins is lower sales of commercial products, number one. And number two, there was also a negative impact uh, because of the, of the negative data at the French facility, the new facility. Uh, as, as Pascal mentioned, we, we should be starting the first uh, GMT batch in the current quarter. We do expect that by the end of the financial year, uh, we will start being close, closer to break even for, uh, for the French facility. As far as the cholesterol and vitamin D analog business is concerned, uh, since, uh, since most of the shipments were for the cholesterol, especially for the, for, for the feed grade, uh, the margins were about 10% as compared to 18% in Q2 of FY23. Um, and uh, as far as India is concerned, we will start seeing positive margins on a consolidated basis uh, in the in the second half of the of the current financial year as more of the shipments start going out. 
So this was a brief on the on the financial highlights uh, for the second quarter and the first half of the of the financial year. Uh, with that, I would like to hand over the call to um, Mr. Paolo Armanino, who is the Chief Operating Officer for the India business. Paolo, over to you. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Uh, maybe I can give a uh, brief update about uh, what our tenant compliance level in the, in the last uh, in the last uh, month, especially in Bavla. So, as uh, um, mentioned before, we have had a very positive uh, audit with the Japanese PMDA in the first uh, uh, week of August. So, this uh, audit uh, has been completely successful without any critical or major observation. And the final report uh, is going to be closed uh, by uh, this week, I think. We received yesterday uh, communication from the Japanese authority. And the most awaited audit was, of course, the WikiLeaks audit, which took place uh, uh, between 18 to 20 of uh, um, September. The audit was a, a big success. Uh, the plant has been, of course, uh, uh, very much appreciated by the uh, authority, uh, not PMDA before and then it came later. Also, in this case, the audit was completely successful without any critical or major observation. Only a few uh, observations in minor uh, were made by the ADKM. So, uh, we are now in the phase of uh, um, uh, replying to the minor observation, and uh, we expect to complete all the process within. Uh, we think it's within a proxy taking. So um, we, we, we see, as I mentioned before, this is an opportunity. Uh, this is the confirmation that the site uh, is back to compliance, full compliance. So today, Bala plant uh, is going to be compliant in all the major regulatory authority in the world. Um, so this is just an update, actually. Thanks, Paolo. Uh, I'd like to hand over a call to Mr. Sanjay Manchmudar, our independent yes. director. Um, good evening, and uh, thank you for uh, patiently listening to the presentation. I don't want to take more time, but I will just mention two or three very critical things. I know that it's a very long period of almost three and a half years that post the EDQM negative inspection and then the major transformation, all I can say that the Bavala facility, as Paolo, Paolo just recently mentioned, has been completely and totally facelifted to an extent that, uh, very honestly, it, it, it looks like, I would believe, one of the best facilities in India today in terms of the technical as well as the overall uh, qualification. And uh, with EDQM inspection, being successfully completed, I think the the good times are definitely likely to be seen. Plus the France coming in production, plus the ADC project also starting to look at the the light of the day. I think, and as Herschel explained, most of the factors, even at the India level, all major contracts will be uh, you know shipped from the third and the fourth quarter. We do expect the year to be definitely positive though it's a bit early for us to exactly quantify, but definitely positive. And I think going forward, we should see uh, reasonable sustainability and consistency. And uh, that, again, the good part is that while everybody talks of Europe, et cetera, yes, we are impacted by inflation, but from a demand stand for the standpoint, there is not major impact. And as Pascal explained, some $18 million of uh, pipeline is visible even in the France facility. So I think all I can say is that by end of the current fiscal, things will look much, much better. And going forward, we will have a lot of good things to say. Uh, but as we all say, let us perform and then we will talk about it. So I think over to you, moderator, for the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Our first question is from the line of Kanav Garg from Investor. Please go ahead, sir. Hello. Yes. 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 yes, you are. Yes. So, in last conference, while I just suggested that from the Babla facility, we can do some 400, 450 crore of revenue. I mean, are we still on track for that? Uh, yeah. So that is something that should happen, I would say, in the in the next uh, financial year. That is what uh, you know our plan is. Okay, so in H2, anyway, since the cycle is almost here, we can expect some pickup in revenue, right? That's correct. And since most of the uh, you know like one of our largest molecules that we manufacture in uh, in Babla, you know there was no shipment in the fourth half because the customer. Uh, required the shipments to happen in the second half, so we should see uh, an uptick in the revenue in the second half of the current financial year. Wonderful. Sir. So my second question is regarding your uh, CAPEX. We wanted to understand what, what is the remaining CAPEX for this year? I would say overall uh, we should be close to about uh, 30 billion in terms of the, of the CAPEX uh, for the full financial year. Which company is it? And I think we have already done 17 million, right? That's correct. That's correct. So there was, uh, there was obviously capex that was done in um, in uh, Babla as well as uh, you know a little bit in Naroda as well. That's the India side. Plus um, overseas, we we completed our project in France, so there was certain capex done for that. And uh, we are also undertaking a digital transformation across the carbon analysis group. This was uh, the major pocket, and apart from that, there is also maintenance capex that needs to be incurred. So, what basically is it fair to assume that at least for the next this year's remaining and for the next year, we don't need any large capex because we have already done one capex in our France facility? Yeah, I would say there are no large projects uh, on which we need to incur any major capex, but yes, I mean, the maintenance capex is something that we will have to keep on incurring. Um, and uh, and the digital transformation is something uh, for which we will keep on expanding. Okay. So my last question is, uh, I think in 2016-17 we used to do some 24-25 percent EBITDA margins, right? And after this yes. ECB and after we, the cycle is cleared and now we are expecting the, the revenues to flow through, is it fair to assume that in the steady run, let's say by FY25, we can reach, let's say, 23-24 percent EBITDA margin? This directionally I'm trying to understand. I, I would say getting back to 25%, uh, you know, that would be more like uh, FY26. Uh, obviously, there would be an increase in the in the in the operating margins in the next financial year. Uh, but but to target 25%, I think it would be FY26. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Thank you. 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 Our next question is from the line of Ritwik Shet from One Up Financial. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, sir. Uh, so, a couple of questions. Uh, firstly, in the opening remarks about the EDQM audit, uh, uh, you mentioned that it was successful, but with minor observations. Firstly, uh, uh, can you uh, you know highlight what kind of observations and uh, once we have remediated this, will the uh, agency come back for a re-audit or uh, how, how does it uh, go forward? Paolo, maybe you can take this? Yes, uh, the observation now to take place, well, recently will be, might take some time, but uh, like uh, if there are just minor observation like in a procedure, especially procedural wise, so the, the auditor are uh, I want to I want to uh, highlight that uh, the observation they were not even uh, uh, categorized as minor. They were categorized as uh, uh, others, which uh, minor or, or like uh, recommendation. So most of these uh, observation by the QM are just the procedural uh, things: uh, how to improve system, how to improve SAP, how to have a better uh, uh, system. So. Like uh, 
many of these observations are very, very minor in nature. So now it's a little bit long because there are these observations are not technical and uh, most uh, related to SAP. But oh. there is no anything serious. Uh, there is no anything serious. Uh, uh, like uh, um, they, they, they auditor themselves uh, uh, in the closing meeting. They told us that we are back to compliance. So it's like uh, everything is, uh, is very good. So now. Now we would be waiting for a written green signal from them. Is is, is that how how it goes forward? Yeah, yeah. We, 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 it works like this. So we received the report from the ABQM a few weeks ago. So we replied to them uh, with the, all the, the reply to all the minor uh, or recommendation. And now they are having a uh, approx six weeks uh, or something like that if we reply to that to that. Sir. And to, then after that, there will be the green light for the um, the new GMP certification and for the CP. Okay. So there are two, two different things. The CP was suspended, will be get back to compliance, and uh, uh, simultaneously we receive the new GMP certification from the uh, Italian authority, IFA, which uh, uh, the audit was uh, uh, together a joint audit by the QM and IFA. Which is the Italian authority? Okay, okay. So, so basically, it will take six weeks for them uh, for the green uh, signal from them written. Okay. Yeah, pro approx. So oh, we not cannot not. normally approx, but oh. like we see a very positive, uh, we see we see a positive attitude from the from the auditor side. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay, so my second question is regarding uh, this uh, Japanese ADC program which you mentioned. Uh, would it be possible to share any potential revenue figures that we can do from this in FI25? Pascal, you want to take that? Yes, uh, unfortunately, this this, uh, this information could be related to volumes. Uh, uh, and that's the kind of information we, we, we are buying with our customer uh, to confidentiality. What I can tell you is it's, it's going to have a major influence on our, our pipeline revenues. Uh, we say, well, uh, uh, tens of millions uh, in, in the future. So that's, that's an ex extremely important project for us, as you can uh, hear. But I cannot give you uh, that much of it uh, without uh, breaking our uh, confidential agreements with the customer regarding those problems. Sure, sure. And so this will be supplied from the Switzerland uh, side, right? Absolutely. But it, it involves uh, a large part uh, in the supply chain, all our uh, uh, facilities around the world. So we start in the UK, we, we do things in China, and then we finish the, the, the product in the in, in, in Switzerland, so that has a major, a major uh, uh, impact on all the, the activities in, the, in all the, the countries and all the facilities. Okay, okay, got it. And, and sir, uh, last question from my end. Uh, the French, faci uh, French facility is uh, having some uh, program as well, which will be started uh, in the current quarter. So would it be possible to share what kind of potential revenue we are looking at from the French facility in the uh, second half of this year and FI25 as well? Yes, our objective is, is to cope with, uh, with the business plan. We, uh, for next fiscal year, we are aiming to, to reach at least 20 million so euros uh, revenue on, on, on that facility. Our forecast by the end of the year should be uh, uh, below, uh, below 10 because of the of the of the delay, but that's uh, that's the, the, the kind of objective that we have. As uh, as we have heard, uh, we have a current pipeline in our end of uh, about uh, 18.4 million uh, euros uh, in hand, and so uh, uh, we are quite uh, happy with that. But we will carry on uh, working to bring new projects, new customers for, for that part in, in, in the coming uh, weeks and months. Okay. Okay. So 20 million for FI25 you mentioned, right? For next year, yeah. Yeah, that's that's our ob objective. Uh, if we can do better, we 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 won't <laughs> we won't stop ourselves from doing that. But that's the uh, that's the target for next year. Right. And will we be a bit a level positive at uh, 20 million euros in, in the French facility? Sorry. 
will we uh, be EBITDA positive uh, uh, at 20 million euro uh, revenue in FI25 in the French facility? Uh, yes, slightly positive. Yeah, certainly. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Uh, happy Diwali and uh, all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you. Thank you. Our next question is from the line of Deep Master from One Up Financial. Please go ahead, sir. Hi. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, hi, I feel a uh, question for you on the. Uh, balance sheet and the cash flow. So you know the operating cash flow has been quite healthy uh, in this quarter, and I see that we released some uh, capital from working capital as well. But despite that, uh, the debt hasn't reduced because I think there's been a fair bit of capex. I think someone asked on capex before, but if you can just you know kind of highlight what's kind of remaining in the capex program, and you know like you know when do you think you can get back to you know generating free cash flow and now reducing debt? Going forward, sure, shortly. So uh, essentially, yeah, I mean the capex for the first half was about uh, 17 million, <clears throat> and uh, as I mentioned, we were obviously completing the the French facility, um, plus uh, we we are undertaking this digital transformation across the carbon and emissions group, uh, and thirdly, there was also capex which was done in India for the tabla side, generally speaking. So what we expect is that in terms of the free cash flow, that should start happening from the next financial year, uh, you know, where most of the capex would have been done, and uh, we would start seeing the return from the capex, uh, which has which has been done. So this this year, obviously, um, you know, since the there was a delay in the in the operations of the of, or starting of the operations of the French facility. Um, you know, the, 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 the EBITDA was negative and um, it would remain so for the, for the full financial year. Uh, while from the next year with, uh, with, with you know, a positive EBITDA from the French facility plus the uh, India operations uh, uh, doing the revenue much more than what we would see in the current financial year with the DPM clearance uh, having happened. We do expect that the free cash flows should start coming in from the next year. Okay, great. So incrementally, is there any large capex that's remaining for India now? India, I would say no. I mean, the only uh, I would say there is about uh, three to four million which needs to be uh, spent on a water purification plant that we are uh, that, that we plan to build in India. Uh, so that is something that it would be incurred. And then there would be certain refurbishment of certain units in Babla. Uh, so we don't expect any major capex to be done in India. Um, and, you know, and then we would want to have like a dedicated facility for hormone-based molecules. But again, you know, this would be spread over a period of time. It's not like everything which would need to be done immediately. Looking at the, at the bandwidth and the, uh, and the kind of projects that would be coming in. So I would say in general, there should not be a major outflow of CapEx uh, as far as India is concerned. And for that matter, it will at our overseas location. Okay, and, and so just you know, lastly, I was just trying to understand uh, the CWIP. It's a fairly large number even now of 900 crores. So is there anything pending from France to be capitalized? And you know, like, can, can you explain just a broad breakup of the CWIP? Yeah, so, so the entire French project is right now under CWIP, and now that the commercial production will begin in the, in the current quarter, you know, all of that will get capitalized into, uh, from the CWIP into the fixed assets. So that is the major portion sitting over there, and second is also the expansion on the EDC, which was undertaken in Switzerland. So that will also get capitalized in the, in the fourth quarter of the current financial year. And third thing would be certain capex in uh, in Babla, uh, which would also get capitalized in the current year now that the EPM audit has been successfully completed. Okay, so so the March ending balance sheet should have a, a CWRP of not more than 200 crores. Is that a fair assumption? I would I would say so. Yeah, most of it should get capitalized. I mean, obviously this would mean that there would be a a higher depreciation charge to the PNL, but obviously it's a, a non-cash charge which would come to the PNL. 
Okay, and then in, in terms of the cash loss that you would expect for the uh, second half of the year, any broad number that you can kind of point to? Uh, so, sorry, Dave, can you please repeat them? So, in, if there's any cash losses that you know would come through the PNL once these assets are capitalized, any, any broad number you can point to in terms of cash loss. Cash losses, yeah, because France will take its own time to you know stabilize. I think even uh, today, maybe, uh, overall at consolidated level, we are still earning, uh, we are cash positive. Not overall cash loss, I just meant like a cash drag. Uh, yeah, so, so Deep, you know, what I would say is that now, you know, what you're expecting is that France should generate a revenue of close to about 8 million euros, maybe a little more by the end of this financial year. So all of that revenue would come in the second half of the current financial year. And uh, that, that would mean that there would be no additional negative data coming from France. Um, the EDC project would again start from, uh, from C4 of, of the current financial year. So we will also start seeing those assets uh, generating revenue. And um, yeah, and uh, I mean, the only cash loss that I mean, not I wouldn't say a uh, cash loss, but the only uh, negative uh, EBITDA, so to say, would be from, um, on a yearly basis, would be from the EA operation. Um, but, you know, that also should start turning quickly into a positive territory as the, as the production and revenues from Babla starts increasing. Correct. And, and do you expect, uh, you know, the customers to, you know, start uh, giving out new contracts as soon as the clearance from EDQM comes through? In the next say six to eight weeks. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, based upon the interactions uh, that we have had with uh, the existing and the potential customers, even at the CPHI, uh, and maybe Paulo, you can also brief on that. But there, there has been quite, uh, quite fantastic, and we do expect a lot of proposals to come from the customers. Um, you know, with which will eventually turn into orders. Yeah. Yeah, sure. So, uh, hey, maybe we can give uh, an update. Uh, so, uh, just after the DQM, then, of course, so we had uh, two weeks ago together, Michigan Cabo Jams and Cabo uh, uh, we had uh, uh, we attended the CPHI Barcelona in Spain, and uh, we had the chance uh, in uh, two, three days to meet uh, the old customer and new customer. Uh, Needless to say that there was a great enthusiasm, honestly, by the customer. So all the old customers are really very happy about uh, this, um, this news, uh, especially the DQM. But also the PNGA, because the Babla today, uh, you know, is approved by all the major uh, authority worldwide. So we, we met uh, all customers, which are very keen. Of course, they are waiting for the green light uh, in the in the DQM website. And also new customer, we have seen that there is a very uh, strong uh, requirement to have a very strong, uh, reliable uh, supplier, CDMO in India. So we have seen a very much increase uh, behind us, especially because as a group, uh, Switzerland, Netherlands, India, and so on, UK, we are able to provide a very wide uh, um, number of services. So this is what we understood is very much uh, uh, required today. And uh, of course, the compliance is something very important. So we can club the two things, uh, the technical uh, compliance, so we have a very successful CPHI. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Paolo. Thanks, Ashish. Thanks. Thank you, Dean. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. Our next question is from the line of Dharmesh Haria, an individual investor. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, uh, thank you for the opportunity. I think I may be repeating this, but just to get the exact clarity uh, around EDQN clearance, uh, what I could understand is those were not minor observations, but sort of questions and recommendations for SOP. So we are expecting the green light next week from today, or it can be even before. That's my question. That's my only question. So, so that's my issue. As, uh, as Paolo explained, maybe Paolo can explain once again, but. 
So it's, it's a process uh, uh, where whatever recommendatory observations or minor, whatever name you call it, we we need to give our replies to that. And uh, once they are satisfied with our replies, is when they will give us the green light. So that's the process by which uh, we would have to comply with. Okay. If that answers your question. And that process would take around six to Yes, these are, uh, are uh, timelines that are decided by the, uh, these authorities. So, uh, the, when there was a closing meeting on 20th of September, they told more or less what are the timelines. So, and they uh, explained to us that uh, after we send the final report, uh, they will have a prox each week. So, okay. this is uh, in their hands. Uh, before, you know, there might be also before. Uh, but they, they said that ideally it should be six weeks, and our report uh, is not uh, having uh, any major non-compliance. So we expect uh, that the, the approval should be smooth because we are speaking only about the recommendation or minor or minor thing. But you know the authority we cannot control the authority. I, I, I forgot to say earlier that you know we Bishman Carbon Dynamics applied for. Uh, um, Inspection to the QM on 22nd October 2022, and the QM came uh, in uh, 20 September 2023. So, it's like uh, after 11 months. So, we cannot control this kind of things, unfortunately. Okay, okay. okay. I understand. Okay, yeah, thank you. That answers my question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. A reminder to the participants you may press star and one to ask a question. As there are no further questions from the participants, I would now like to hand over the conference to Mr. Pascal for closing comments. Over to you, sir. I think uh, uh, everybody uh, will stay on the line uh, for our uh, conference today, and I wish everybody uh, happy Diwali, and uh, we're looking forward to speak to you during the next quarter. Thank you very much. Thank you and happy Diwali to Thank all. Thank you. Happy Diwali to everybody. Happy Diwali to everyone. Thank you. On behalf of Dishman Carbogen Amsils Limited, this concludes today's conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your.